This is Nick Day uh, reporting for the Midweek Sports Bar on BCFM Radio at Stoke Gifford. We're here with some of the few and the many friends of Ben Hiscox, who tragically lost his life during the week. And um, we're here to talk to some of his friends about memories of Ben and also to have a look at the fantastic tribute that's been left here at the, uh, the home of Stoke Gifford FC. I'll start with um, James. It's obviously difficult, lads, because the pain is so so raw and so um, new. I-, I spoke earlier to you, James, and two things that struck me as being a kind of outsider, although we, I guess I share a little connection that we were part of the Bristol Rovers family. There's a real community feel about Stoke Gifford, which is unusual, it seems to me, of a village within a big city like Bristol. Yeah. The stories that I've seen online, on Facebook and on, all over the internet is that Ben just wasn't a part of that community. He was the life and soul in the middle of that community. Tell me tell me the Ben you knew. Oh, um, always make you laugh. Bright enough anyone's day. Just ain't got a bad word to say, you know. Um. And, and it's, it's so difficult and so tragic at the age of 30 that just a week ago he was preparing for a, for a game out here. It's a one in a... It's not even a one in a million chance what happened here. It's a one in... 10 million chance those tackles happen every week at football grounds and I think it's just case of wrong place ridiculously bad timing um, no shouldn't have happened like this shouldn't have ended like this at all absolutely I've talked to John who uh, used to be his manager at Bristol Manor Farm not only was he a likely lively lad and the life and soul of the party he was a damn good footballer wasn't he yeah he certainly was I mean I been involved with Stoke Giver, I lived there for all my life and I've been involved with it all the way through. And I, to be honest, it took a lot of the lads from this area to have a chance of playing at a higher level. Ben was certainly one of them. It was a little gem, Ben. He smiled. When he remember Ben come onto a football pitch, he'd be smiling and he'd all be up to something. Whatever he'd done, whatever Ben done, he couldn't do no wrong in anybody's arm because what he'd done, he'd done everything as a laugh. When he played football, he smiled and he'd run up behind defenders and rank their trousers down or shorts down and things like that <laughs> even when the ball's up near the end of the pitch he was always up to something mischief, mischievous Ben but the smile he had he just made everybody such a such an affectionate guy I think when Ben if once you knew Ben he was always your friend and everybody was he made everybody feel really welcome and especially the new lads who joined clubs Stoke Gifford or when he come to Manor Farm with me any new lad he would take under his wing and I used to say to him don't get too close to him because he'd get, he'd get you in trouble. <laughs> but really, I can't say enough. I mean, the lad was just so affectionate. I'm really, you know, just just amazed how this has happened. And as you said, it's just terrible news for us all up here. The, the response here, the flowers and the tribute and the shirts and the notes that everybody's written is fantastic. The fact that um, my next job is at the Memorial Stadium where we'll have eight, 9,000 people this afternoon and, and there's going to be a minute's applause for Ben I've been doing that job for 20 years and that's only ever been reserved for directors of the club servants of the club ex-players of the club I can't remember the last time it was ever a supporter that must say how hard sort of Ben was held in esteem I'm sure it doesn't ease your pain but um, it must it must pay tribute to just what kind of man he was yeah I've been with the club for a few years now and he's just very affectionate he said he's you always smile in and just have a laugh. Just and he was, I say this carefully, he was sometimes as good in, in the bar room or in the pub as he was on the on the football pitch. I mean, you guys enjoy your football, but you're young lads, you like a laugh and you like a drink. And he was in the middle of that. Anybody got any memories of some of the pranks he used to play? Such a great lad. Um, the one thing, and it's the wrong word to say, anything good come out of this, but it's shown what a great community and club we have at Stoke Gifford. I joined here when I first started at 17. I went off on my travels, you know, playing around Bristol. It's the same as Ben and lots of others, but we all come back because it's not just about playing football. It's about mates. It's about, you know, having a great time, looking out for one another. And this week's been very tough as you can imagine you know quite a few of us were there right at the end and to look around in the faces of the people and the pain and then the, the meet in the pub afterwards but it's not just carried on from there it's obviously carried on to the next day when we come up here to start this 
memorial and it's just gone on for days. But Ben is a footballer, great footballer, a lot of great footballers have attitude, have something about him. But he didn't have any edge, he had nothing bad about him. He had time for every single person in the bar. He wasn't just one person's friend, he was everybody's friend. And it's going to be tough to carry on from here as a team. But we'll be strong and we'll try and do it for him. You know, we're looking to win the league. We've got a cut semi final on Tuesday. And we'll make door utmost to win it for him. Looking back now, how strange it all seems. Um, we've lost our last couple of games. We've been a bit of a slump. And um, he done the team talk Saturday. And it was one of those moments when uh, no one said a word. Everyone sat still, just looked looked straight at him for two minutes no one said a word and just took everything in because what he was saying was so true and I think because he was so well respected everyone sat up and listened and looking back now how it, how it happened I don't know just I don't know very very surreal moment he's a great bloke he could have played on at a higher level but my notes say he wanted to come back here because that's where his heart was so in a way he's come full circle nobody expected this and it's going to take a long time for you fellas to get over it, but um, I guess he was doing what he loved with the people he loved. So um, thank you for your time and, and wish you all the best.